One of the things I like to do from time to time is to do some question and answer forums. And sometimes I do this on Facebook Live, sometimes I do this on TikTok, on Instagram Live, or any other platform. And sometimes I do this in a Facebook group that I have where a lot of my Filipino audience are in. And I do this not just to answer questions and be present online, but also to be able to find some inspiration for some new content. And there was this one question that actually gets asked so many times that really found me inspired to do this video. And that question is, how do I become a better photographer? And honestly, it's very hard to answer, but I think I do have one idea that will surely help you to become a better photographer no matter what kind of photography you are doing. Now first and foremost, let's define what a better photographer is because this will be very different for a lot of people. But I think the only way we should see ourselves in terms of becoming better photographers is internally. Meaning that we want to be better photographers than who we were yesterday or the week before or the year prior. Our measure of being good photographers should never be based on something that is external and should never be based on things that we cannot control. Meaning that seeing yourself as a better photographer should not be based on how much you earn, it should not be based on how many followers you have on social media, and it should definitely not be based on someone else. It doesn't mean that you're doing better in whatever aspect of photography or social media or business that you're also a better photographer than that other person because ultimately you can never control that person and it's never a good approach to base how good you are on other people. So in terms of becoming a better photographer, what we mean here is that we want to be better than ourselves in the past. And now what we have to talk about is who were you in the past? Now all of us start our photography journey in different ways. Some photographers start out doing it very casually, learning by themselves, maybe reading magazines, maybe reading books, or watching YouTube tutorials on their spare time. Some are a little more active, doing it, practicing more often than others. Some go to school to do photography, to learn photography. And of course, there are people who would just explore everything with their camera. And what I can tell you is that all of these approaches, of course, are effective depending on who you are. And in most cases, it doesn't really matter if you have a diploma for photography or if you learn by yourself at home and at a random park practicing on random strangers. The point is we all have different ways of learning photography. We all take different paths. And ultimately, it will never be a linear thing, meaning that someone who took this path will become better than someone who took this path. It is an individualized process. Now let's talk about who you are today. You might be, say, a portrait photographer, a product photographer, a wedding photographer, events, someone who shoots macro, someone who does landscapes, architecture, or whatever else. More often than not, we have our primary thing. We have our primary identity as a photographer. As for me, at first I started as a concert photographer because I was quite involved in the music scene locally. And then I started doing portraits when I was in college. Now aside from mastering exposure in my camera and blah blah blah, the biggest thing I learned while doing portraiture is that it is not what's for me. But of course, I also learned a few things about lighting, about posing, and how important it is to be able to connect with your human subject to be able to create better images. And that's actually how I realized that it might not be for me because I found out that I am actually an introvert and there are days wherein connecting or talking or relating to my human subjects might not be optimal. So after that, I explored many different kinds of photography. I tried to do macro, and eventually I found myself falling in love with landscape photography. And for me right now, that is still my main thing. However, I do a lot of that as a hobby, except of course for the content creation that happens on the side. But in terms of doing photography professionally, I am an architectural photographer. I am a real estate photographer, so I shoot tall buildings, small buildings, small houses, and even the interiors. 
And here's actually the story about how I pushed myself to be a better architectural photographer. And believe me, even if you're not an architectural photographer, this general thing will apply to you. Now we all do different kinds of photography. We all do different genres and this means paying attention to different kinds of details. This means paying attention and trying to control many different factors. This means also having an entirely different mindset as to other kinds of photography. And of course, the most important part of your journey in mastering your specific field of photography is to keep practicing and doing it over and over until you have as much control as possible to all these factors, until you have that different level of awareness when you are shooting so that you can anticipate problems, you can anticipate challenges, or in a different way, you can also spice things up by being able to identify things that you can improve while you are shooting. These are the things that you only learn by doing. These are the things that are brought to you by experience. Maybe one experience 10 years ago, five years ago when you were practicing will come in handy so that you can give your photos for this particular shoot a different twist. And that's something that you should never ever skip. For the sake of this conversation, this is your way to become a good photographer. Now, how do we become better? And here is my surefire tip on how you can become a better photographer. I sincerely hope that when this video finds you, you're doing very well in your photography. And if not, of course, there are ways to improve on it. But I also hope that even if you are a professional photographer, you have time to go back to being a hobbyist. And I think that is very important. So what I'm saying is the best way to become a better professional photographer is to go back to being a hobbyist. Why is that? Because many hobbyists actually explore many different genres. And this is actually what I did when I wanted to improve how I did architectural photography. Now, there was a big advantage in becoming an architectural photographer that of course I am a landscape photographer. And this is of course dealing with the environment around my subject. Usually when I'm shooting landscape photography, I'm photographing something rather big. So this might be a body of water, this might be an entire mountain, or maybe something, you know, a little bit bigger than a human being. And one of the biggest implications of that would of course be it would be rather impossible to control and manipulate the lighting because I would need a really, really big light source and a really, really big softbox to do that. So obviously in architectural photography, most of the time, I approach it like landscape photography and wait for the proper time of day or the best time of day wherein I will get the best light for my subject. This also allowed me to make use of the external factors in the environment to improve my visual design. So this is where long exposure comes in, maybe letting the clouds in the background move so that I have a smoother background and it's more visually appealing. Maybe using long exposure to also get rid of moving clutter in the foreground or something like that. So being a landscape photographer was definitely the biggest edge that I had coming into architectural photography. However, when I wanted to improve how I did architectural photography or give it a different spice, I found some photographers online that really inspired me to look into street photography. And no, you're probably not gonna find any street photographs on my website, never on my Instagram or Facebook, but I did try and learn the discipline of street photography. And this is because I wanted to be able to infuse human life in the architectural photos that I have. This way, having candid human elements in my architectural photographs actually add a bit more depth into the storytelling and at the same time can also improve the visual design of my architectural photos. And this applies to the wide shots that show the entire exterior structure and also the tighter shots that involve the finer details of an architectural project. This way, I learned a bit of street photography not to become a street photographer, but I tried to learn how they think and how they see things so that I can involve some of that into architecture. Now, at the same time, going back to my landscape photography, 
My exposure to commercial architectural photography actually opened my eyes to the different approaches that I can do for landscape photography. Before, I used to treat landscape photography as something literal. You take a photo of a place that you find and that's it. Now I use my travels to find landscapes that somehow inspire me to create images that most people don't see. I remember reading this quote that says that you don't photograph what you see, but you photograph what you feel. And that's actually how I approach landscape photography now. So in terms of doing composite editing in terms of turning days into nights, in terms of um, time blending and all those different approaches. I actually learned a lot of them not by shooting landscapes, but actually by shooting and processing architecture. So it actually looped back because I also think that being an architectural photographer opened my vision a bit wider so that I can become somehow a better landscape photographer as well. Now, some other things that I also yearned to learn were content creation and because of that lighting and also, of course, product photography because I wanted to create better thumbnails for my reviews. It's really that simple. I wanted to create better visuals for my product reviews on YouTube and also on F-Stoppers for the articles that I write. And that also entailed learning lighting, which is something that I avoided for so long. And so by learning how to light products and also by learning how to light, well, technically myself in whatever setting that I am shooting, it actually turned out to be very beneficial to lighting the interiors of the projects that I shoot. So while I did not actively seek to learn lighting, for interiors. I actually learned that because I started shooting products and I started filming myself in front of the camera just like what I'm doing right now. So clearly out of my experience, the best tip I can give you for someone who wants to become a better photographer is become a hobbyist and become so curious that you try other things. It doesn't mean that you're quitting on what your primary thing will be, but it's actually just learning and gathering as many things as you can from other genres, from other styles, from other approaches, so that when the opportunity comes that you can actually apply it on that main thing that you're doing, no matter what that is, you actually have more tools on your belt. Am I saying that right? You have more tricks up your sleeve. It's because it's not that you're the best, it's not that you're a master of everything you learn, but there will always be things that you learn from one kind of photography that you can apply to another kind of photography, and that will be a unique thing that maybe not everyone in your field can offer. So if you're a professional and you want to enhance what you can offer, try looking at other things that you can learn. There we go. Of course, you might have questions. You might also have some suggestions. So you can definitely leave those in the comment section down below. Of course, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer, as I already said. And this channel talks about a lot about those things and the gear that I use. So if you're into that, then do click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. But in any case, I wish you luck and thank you for watching.